you're in the market for a new trail camera and you find yourself in the store looking at shelf after shelf just full of new trail cameras or maybe you're scrolling online and there's just thousands of different options of trail cameras what should you be looking for how about the advertisements on each of these trail cameras uh, there can be a lot of information some of it possibly misleading well today i'm going to give you some of the tips that i have found most useful when looking at trail cameras we're going to maybe debunk some of those myths or some of the advertised uh, specs of these trail cameras stay tuned this should be very informative what to look for when buying a new trail camera so we're not going to waste any time we're going to dive straight into maybe one of the most misleading advertisements in trail cameras or at least in my opinion it's probably one of the most grossly exaggerated things advertised about trail cameras and that is megapixels when you're looking at trail cameras most every trail camera manufacturer has a megapixel attached to their trail camera common sense would say you get a higher megapixel trail camera you're going to get better footage you're going to get either going to get better videos or better picture qualities in front of me here we have some great examples on the end here we have a 16 megapixel trail camera a 32 a 42 and a 60. so we have 16 to 60 megapixel uh, obviously the 60 is going to be the absolute best trail camera is that correct well that is not the case in fact i have found the advertised megapixel for these trail cameras to be virtually useless when comparing different trail cameras in other words what the manufacturer advertises their megapixel to be you can't necessarily put that against another trail camera and expect the higher megapixel trail camera to automatically be the better trail camera so let's do a test i'm going to show you two videos one is from a 20 megapixel trail camera one is from an 18 megapixel trail camera sounds pretty close almost identical check out these videos and see if you can tell which is which So as you can see in that example, there really was no comparison in the quality of those videos, although they were both in the daytime. One was dramatically better than the other, and it was not the 20 megapixel. Now 20 and 18 isn't a huge difference, but as you can see in the quality, there was a huge difference. In fact, the lower 18 megapixel trail camera was far superior to the 20 megapixel trail camera. Let's do one more example, two videos. This time, one is from 42 megapixel trail camera and one is from a 16 megapixel trail camera. So you're probably catching on by this point the 16 megapixel trail camera in my opinion takes far better quality video than the 42 megapixel trail camera so that brings up the question what should i look for if i want a quality video or picture from a trail camera uh hunting farmers saying that the megapixel isn't necessarily a good gauge on how to get a quality trail camera well unfortunately i haven't found an accurate way to judge what the quality of the photos and videos are going to be like when you're looking in the store or online the boxes and trail cameras all look very good and very promising but you just can't tell what type of quality you're going to get till you actually use it well that brings us to how i judge how good of a trail camera is going to be and that's with youtube review videos now i personally do a lot of review videos on my channel and i always include sample photos and videos from the exact trail camera when you're watching reviews online not just my channel but any channel out there look for ones that include actual 
sample photos and videos. I highly suggest looking for a review video that includes the sample photos and videos. Make sure you get both daytime and nighttime samples. This should give a more accurate assessment of exactly what type of quality you can expect from a trail camera. When you simply go into the store or go in line and read the box, they all look good. But when you actually see the sample photos and videos from that trail camera, then you have a real good idea what you're buying. Now there's a lot more detail that we could get into when it comes to the megapixel and the advertisement of trail cameras like interpolation and how the manufacturers use that in their advertising. We could talk about the true native sensor size of each of the trail cameras and what processors the different manufacturers make. But I don't want to make it sound like I'm an expert so we're going to move on to the next subject. Oftentimes when you're looking to buy a trail camera you can see the flash type advertised. In general, I break down the flash types into three different categories. One is white flash, and the other two are infrared, and that's the 850 wavelength and the 940 nm wavelength. The nm stands for nanometers. Uh, the white flash cameras, there are not many of those around, although some manufacturers are still making some. When trail cameras first came out, virtually all trail cameras were white flash, but we have since moved to generally all infrared. Uh, in general, the 850 is a better nighttime flash, or at least it reaches out further and has the potential to light up your photos and videos better to see exactly what's going on at night. The trade-off is it is visible to the human eye. It is a very faint glow, and if you look directly at the camera when it's taking a picture or a video at night, you will see that small red glow from the 850 IR. Now, in contrast, the 940 IR is not visible to the human eye. You cannot see it, so if you want to use a trail camera for surveillance and you don't want anybody to notice it, no chance of noticing the trail camera, 940 is going to be what you want to look for. Now again, they advertise it as uh, different names and some manufacturers have their own specific name for it. But oftentimes you have to dig into the specifications, maybe on a website or maybe in small print on the back of the trail camera to see if it is 850 or 940. It really comes down to personal preference and how you're going to be using the trail camera. Again, if you want uh, the greatest range or the most footage out of your IR flash to see what's going on, you're probably going to want to stick to a camera that has 850 IR. And as I already mentioned, if you want a camera uh, that is going to be used maybe for security or you're going to be hanging your trail camera in a place that you don't want anybody to see it when it goes off, uh, you're probably going to want to stick to the 940. You will sacrifice some distance. It's probably not going to be quite as good of a coverage area by your IR, but those are the two IRs available in most all trail cameras. Another subject I wanted to touch on is not always advertised, but I feel is pretty important when you're going to be getting a new trail camera, and that is its field of view or the angle of the lens. Now they come in a wide variety. You can get a wide angle lens that could be up to 120 degrees, but trail cameras also come in a much narrower field of view and they might be as low as a 60 or a 70 degree lens uh, in these trail cameras. What that means to you is you're, again, going to have to know what you're going to be using the trail camera for. The narrower field of view, again, you're not going to see as much in the photo or video, but it's going to seem much more zoomed in, or you're going to seem uh, up close to the animals. Let's say you're going to be placing your trail camera over a bait site or a mineral lick. The narrower field of view might be the best choice. You're going to have to get that zoomed in look, and you don't have to see a whole wide area because you know where the animal is going to be standing. Now in contrast, let's say you place your trail camera uh, in a wide open field or maybe on a trail but you're not sure where the animals are going to be coming from, the wide angle view, maybe a 120 degree trail camera, is probably going to be your best choice. Personally, I like a wide field of view. I feel like it gives me a better chance to capture all the action. Now the downside of that is everything's going to seem further away. So the wider the angle, the more you're going to see, but everything's going to appear further away and smaller uh, in their pictures and videos, whereas your narrower field of view is going to bring everything a little bit closer, but you're sacrificing some of the field of view. So it really comes down to what you're going to be using your trail camera for and a personal preference, but I would advise to at least know what the field of view of your trail camera is going to be. 
Again, it's not always readily available, but if you dig into their uh, manufacturer's website or some trail cameras will advertise that, uh, know what you're getting when you're buying a new trail camera, whether it's gonna be a wide field of view or a narrow field of view. Another thing that'll almost always come up, or at least you'll see it advertised on trail cameras, and that is its trigger speed. Uh, a lot of trail cameras are down to 0.1 second or 0.3, maybe they're 0.5 or 0.7. Do you need the absolute quickest trail camera? Well, in my opinion, trigger speed is not very important nowadays. When trail cameras first came out, there was a big difference in trigger speed. But again, in my opinion, I don't feel there's much difference between trigger speeds between any trail camera. So I don't care if they're advertising 0.1 second or 0.5 or 0.7 second. Really, can you tell a difference uh, between that quick of a trigger speed? Uh, in my opinion, it is much more important on how you set your trail camera up. But the way you set your trail camera up is going to be the greatest factor to affect the trigger speed. The angle in which you place your trail camera, the height, uh, the distance away from the trail that you're placing your trail camera on, all that plays a part in trigger speed. And to me, I'm simply not looking at trigger speed when I'm buying a trail camera because virtually every single trail camera out there nowadays uh, has a pretty good trigger speed, especially if you set it up correctly. Now I realize some of you might be screaming at your screen right now saying, no, absolutely there's a difference between trigger speed. Uh, I'm just talking from my opinion and my personal experience uh, with the newest trail cameras out there, really trigger speed is not a determining factor when I'm buying a trail camera. Now there's many more subjects that we didn't touch on here like price points, battery types or battery life, all that can be important. Uh, we simply don't have time to get into all that in today's video, but for a short recap, uh, megapixels, I do not find that reliable. Uh, you cannot simply go and get the highest megapixel trail camera and expect that you're gonna get in the highest photo and video quality. Uh, the IR flash, again, you're gonna have to do a little digging and know whether you're getting an 850 or 940 and which one's gonna be best for you. And that comes down to what you're gonna be using the trail camera for. Also the trigger speed, again, to me, it's not a big deal. And on the package, they might say 0.1 trigger speed, but that doesn't necessarily correlate that that trail camera is gonna be much better than one that says 0.5 second trigger speed. Well, I'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Uh, I am no expert, although I do use a lot of trail cameras and have a lot of experience with different makes and models. I enjoy hearing from you and I often learn from you. If you have comments or questions, I'd encourage you to put them down in the comment section. I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video.